Here we see a neonatal skull, as we might see in a newborn baby or a full-term fetus. Again, we see the facial bones and the cranial bones. Mandible. Maxilla. Nasal bone. Nasal cavities. Orbital cavities for the eyes. Zygomatic bones. It's actually a bit of sphenoid bone you can see there. Temporal bones. Oh, that's one temporal bone. There's another one on the other side. Parietal bones here. The large bones on the side. And of course the occipital bone at the back. And as we would expect, the foramen magnum, where the spinal cord would lie here, where my finger is, connecting with the medulla oblongata within the cranial cavity. We notice on the neonatal skull the frontal bones are not yet ossified into a single bone. But maybe the main thing we notice about the neonatal skull is the presence of the fontanelles, these gaps in the bones here. Now these are made of cartilaginous sheets that resemble membranes. They're actually membranes of mesenchyme. They will ossify in time, of course, but let's just notice the anatomical names of these first of all. Here we have the large anterior fontanelle Sometimes these are called soft spots on the top of the baby's head. And at the back, we notice the posterior fontanelle. At the front and the side here, we have the anterior lateral fontanelle the anterior lateral fontanelle. Coming down here, we notice the posterior lateral fontanelle. And of course there's another posterior lateral fontanelle on the other side, and another anterior lateral fontanelle on the right side. The presence of these fontanelles and the cartilaginous tissue allows for flexibility during birth as the fetal head passes down through the birth canal. And they also allow for the rapid growth of the brain that happens in the first two years of life.